Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tanel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartook-3. Our previous episode featured our five heroes moving off into different groups. Welby the Halfling delivered the strange box to Gregor and took his reward over to the tavern with Cabe the Bard and Fargus the Ranger. Lady Irena and the cleric Elaine opted to head up the steep hills to the gates of Phoenix. Along the way, the Reverend Sister overheard a group of men speaking and quickly ascertained that Welby O'Toole had delivered the package to the wrong man. We rejoined the groups as they explored Dockside, the small community along the water's edge next to Phoenix. It may be louder in here than it was by the docks, screamed Fargus as the trio found an empty table in the center of the tavern. A few moments later, a buxom young wench with red curls wandered over to take their orders. Her cleavage distracted the three men until she smacked them upside their heads. Gentlemen, your order, she stated in no uncertain terms. Embarrassed, the three ordered mead quickly, but the waitress was reluctant. Any of you got coins? The triumphant halfling withdrew the leather pouch and jingled it out with a large smile crossing the woman's face, who quickly brushed up against the diminutive man and leaned over, giving him an, a view of her ample chest. This place could use some music, shouted Cabe Silvertongue. I bet they'd pay me if I got up and entertained them. Fargus the ranger drained his first mug and wiped the froth from his mustache and goatee with the back of his hand. A loud belch followed and the warrior advised that he would take that bet. Three more tankards appeared on the table as the comely waitress gave Welby a wink. Looking around, the trio observed that the establishment was a hive of activity. Games of chance, strength contests, and drinking seemed to be the standard fare by both men and women of the crowd. By the time the second round of drinks had been drained, the serving wench returned and asked for payment to the tune of a gold crown and three silver blades. The rogue gleefully pulled out the leather pouch and announced the drinks were on him. The waitress licked her lips seductively, expecting a large tip, but everyone gasped as the pouch tipped and only rocks fell into the halfling's hand. Placing her hands on the hips, she scowled and demanded payment. The men quickly began to fumble through their pockets as a ruckus started behind them. A pair of belligerent drunks had gotten into an argument over a dice game and were shoving each other. One of the men dumped his mug of ale all over Cabe, who jumped up quickly, knocking the man into the table behind him. The men at that table spilled their drinks and began to pummel the drunk man severely. The waitress yelled for the bartender, who jumped the table with a large mace. As he cracked the first belligerent drunk with a mace, the other drunk punched the owner. This caused the bar to erupt into a melee, with multiple fighters taking part in the fracas. As Welby stared at his handful of rocks, he was grabbed by the collar from the ranger who dragged him out of the tavern with Cabe covering their escape. A body came through the window next to them, drawing the attention of the guards nearby. As the trio tried to look innocent, both Lady Irena and Sister Elaine spotted them and rushed to their side. Gasping for breath, the female cleric grabbed Welby and began to tell him he had delivered the box to the wrong person. She quickly explained that while she and the mage were headed to the gates of Phoenix, they overheard the real Gregor Finewire, and he seemed upset. Watching the guards pile into the tavern, Cabe remarked that fact would explain the bag of stones. Sister Elaine queried the bard about the comment, and the situation was quickly explained. As guards began to haul drunken brawlers out of the business, Fargus pointed out that they should move out of the way before they were unfairly blamed for the incident. The group ducked around the side of the next building over and huddled up. They discussed their options, and while Sister Elaine was reluctant to join the endeavor, she was persuaded by Fargus, who explained that Welby was certainly in need of religious counseling. She shook her head, confirming the general opinion, and agreed to go. 
Yelling was heard and the party peered around the corner, just in time to see the runaway ram from the docks plow into the guards and drunken sailors, scattering everyone to the ground. Welby O'Toole doubled over again in laughter as bodies went flying and the handlers were once again giving chase to the loose animal. Hey look, exclaimed Lady Irena, across the street, isn't that the guy from the docks? With tears rolling down his eyes, Welby stopped laughing and tried to spy the individual. Sister Elaine observed the man and confirmed the mage's guess. Yeah, that's him. He's headed back to the docks. We need to get him and get that box back before the real Gregor Finewire kills the rogue. The group quickly darted across the muddy road and intercepted the man. Welby stepped in front of him, blocking his path, and began to argue with him until Fargus pulled him back. Gregor became upset and tried to argue as well, but Lady Elaine moved in to calm everyone down while Irena and Cabe kept a lookout for problems. After getting everyone silent, the cleric tried to sort out the problem. After explaining that Gregor had the wrong box and it was given to him by mistake and they needed it back, the ma they learned that the man did not have it anymore. Welby attempted to throttle the man but was pulled away again by Fargus and held still. Elaine asked for an explanation, to which the man did his best. It was his position that the box was a gift from the halfling and the pouch of stones was given as a trade. He continued stating that many strangers come to Phoenix and customs involve trading goods. He merely thought that that was the case with the halfling. The rogue began to yell but was quickly muffled as a large hand of Fargus covered his mouth. Gregor explained that his name was Gregor, Gregor Mainstay, not Finewire, whom he did not know. An exasperated Elaine returned him to the returned to him about the location of the box. Gregor then explained, Well, since I couldn't figure out how to open it, I assume it was a trinket, but it was useless to me, so I sold it. The group chorused with a, Sold it? The man pulled a strange red root out of his pocket and began to gnaw on it, while shaking his head, yes. The group, including Cabe and Irina, who had began to pepper the man with questions. Overwhelmed, he put his hands up and began to back away. Look, people, he gave me a box after asking me my name. I didn't ask for it. I didn't want it at the time. I figured it was, you know, a gift. I didn't have a use for it, so I sold it to J Johan the Shark to pay my gambling debt. If you want it back, you go talk to him. Now, do I have to call those guards over there? Or can I go now? The group turned to notice that the guards had resolved the fight and would soon be roaming the streets again. Sister Elaine asked where they could find Johan and were directed down the street to the brewery. Puzzled, the group looked lost and Gregor leaned in, whispering Johan's business is at the back. Ask for Crimson Ale. He then spotted a friend of his and excused himself, leaving the five young adventurers pondering their next move. Welby expressed gratitude to the others for helping him and stated he would go see the loan shark and hopefully retrieve the box, then find the real Gregor and resolve the mess. Cabe and Fargus looked at each other, pointing out that he would probably need help and would accompany him. The cleric pointed out that she observed the real Gregor and could also help leaving only the elven Irena. Seeing the rest of the group look at her, she rolled her eyes and replied, Fine, it's not like I have anything else to do. Moving down the bustling street, the group passed several merchant shops and strange people before arriving at the Dockside Brewery. Entering the businesses, their noses were assaulted by the stale aroma of hops and grains. One of the employees carrying a heavy bag of grain was stopped by Irena and was asked for some crimson ale. His retort was both rude and racially insensitive, and he walked away. Puzzled, the group looked at each other until another employee that had rat-like features came up to them. You be looking for crimson ale? Come with me quickly. The man scurried away, followed by the rest of the group, with Cabe and Irena looking at each other skeptically. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at the Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.